welcome and welcome back to the channel. I hope I said that right for any German people watching. Today we are going to be looking at Giel again and it's going to be on the DDR5 front. Now note that this isn't a peer review on the Giel DDR5 memory which is the Giel Polaris CL3856 mega transfers but what I really want to do is actually compare the XMP versus the XPO results because this Giel has been optimized for both of these overclocking measures. Just as a side note, before we actually begin, I am a little bit hesitant on reviewing DDR5 purely because it's changing so much every single day. So I say this because we've gone from 4,800 mega transfers, pretty much unstable when DDR5 released, all the way now to 7,000 stable on dual channel and with talks of 8, 9, 10,000 on the way. So what I say today might not be relevant in two, three weeks time. So please timestamp this. Something also important to note is that Samsung, who is a major manufacturer for RAM dies, have stated their commercial intent into DDR5 versus their current or past indie approach to it. And we can also see this because DDR5 for servers has recently, I believe a week ago or two weeks ago, been introduced so we can see the commercial viability for DDR5 coming through now. Now note for these tests this is my first segmented DDR5 data but more data will come along but I have put in DDR4 data so that we can have a side-by-side -side comparison. For the testing of this RAM we're going to go through the normal suite of testing but before we get too far ahead of ourselves let's just take a look at the specs. Firstly, it is a kit of a 2 by 16 gigabytes. Its CL latency is CL38, but if you need to know the timings, it's 38, 44, 44, 84. It goes up to 5600 megahertz or mega transfers and it's a PC5 44800. As mentioned before, it is optimized for Expo as well as XMP. And when setting to XMP or to Expo, the voltage is 1.25. Lastly, with some investigation, the actual dies are micron dies. Design-wise, not really going to go too much into the design. However, it was a little bit of a mirror for me on the Gil Orion that I did. However, I will say that the build quality of this did feel a lot more solid to me. However, the metal just a little bit too thin. On RGB-wise, syncs well with any program and I did check. And it does look good when you actually have all four DIMMs in. But looks matters not, it's all about the performance when it comes to gaming RAM. So let's see what this did when we compared Expo with XMP. First up is Memtest Latency, lower is better. Now note that for light blue, that will be XMP because XMP is actually Intel if you didn't know. And then Expo will be orange because that is AMD's tuning. Now, if you look at the latency from Memtest 86, the best latency that we had there was 31.35, and that is on XMP. Expo did have a higher latency of a 33.74, which is a little bit odd to me, but if we do compare those to the DDR4 versions of the Gear Lorraine and the Zeal Viper, those obviously had a 45.61 and a 44.32, so we do have a lot better latencies on Memtest. Onto ADA64 latency, which was a little bit opposite of what we had in Memtest, we had a latency of 77.6 from XMP and lower of 74.4. Then we also have the Orion and the Steel Vipers there just so that you can make a comparative. Pass marks showing pretty identical results there, 51 to 51. We do have the Gil Orion DDR4 coming in at 42, but these results a little bit all over the place because these tests do test things differently, but for me, a little bit of a win here for Expo. Onto transfer speeds, Memtest registered a 52.362 for the XMP result, and on Expo it was a 55.871. I tested this a few times and did get the same results, so I did take a median average of around about four or five results. And we can see they're dropping in the DDR4 segment is the Orion as well as the Steel Viper. Read, write, copy, a little bit more mirrored in that for the read, we had a 68776 for XMP and for Expo, we had a 68676. So pretty mirrored there. On the right, we had 73758 for XMP and on right, we had a 73683 for Expo. Lastly, on copy, we had 63.272 for XMP and for Expo, we had 63.509. So overall, the 8064 read, write and copy 
mirrored across XMP and Expo with negligible differences. Last is Passmark overall, and it's something that I like to include because it kind of treats all RAM equal in that we have Gil Polaris on XMP coming in at 3704 and slightly above at 3726 is the Expo. Now, just some added bonus content. If we look at XMP versus Expo in the Mantest 86 transfers, I actually see that Expo had a little bit of a smoother graph scaling downwards. They both scale pretty equally, but again, just noting that there was a lot better taper off for the Expo, but XMP did hold its read and write, well, rather its read for longer. Now, the one important thing after testing is we do need to know that it is stable. So I ran every single test through Mentest as well as Wirecruncher and zero errors on either through all of the tests. So on this RAM, at least for XMP as well as Expo, the Gil Polaris did phenomenally well in that there were zero errors. So you can safely XMP or Expo this RAM when putting it into your system. On to the conclusion, and I'm not really gonna conclude talking about the RAM because we're actually looking at XMP versus Expo, but I will say that I was really impressed with the RAM and we'll know more as time goes by, but I'm currently using it and really enjoying it in my own setup before I have to send it back. But onto the point at hand, XMP versus Expo. Intel have had a commanding lead for many, many years and XMP has been the staple diet for being able to overclock your memory, very effective and very reliable. Now, AMD has come along with Expo and done a phenomenal job. I do think that XMP still has a lead, but if we look at these results just out of the gate, I think that AMD has done a phenomenal job in helping vendors being able to actually get the best out of their RAM for AMD chipsets. However, it is still too early to be able to say one is better than the other because results are going to vary from RAM manufacturer to RAM manufacturer or rather RAM die manufacturer to RAM die manufacturer and motherboard to motherboard. But just some really interesting food for thought and I think well done to AMD for something really good. As my expectations going into these testings was not to have too high of an expectation for Expo. If I was really hoping enjoyed the video look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers goodbye i have to i'm not gonna rush through it but obviously time is a factor because of load shedding welcome to south african content creation where you are always on the clock okay but as that good movie from disney said sometimes we just gotta let it go or let it go let it go let it go can all me back. <clears throat> Maybe don't put that in.